Hello YouTube. I just got my Patrick Kallevik custom knives and I'm gonna do a review of them. I'm gonna start with the shiny cleaver. It's 75 CR1 is the steel. It's basically 1075 with a little chromium in it if I'm not mistaken. It's a beautiful blade. It's hardness, it's HRC, shall we check here, 61, 62. It's beautiful. Everything, the fit and finish is flawless. Good chunky handle, nice polished soil, nice polished, polished sorry, spine. No um, sharp spots. There's only one thing that makes this a 9 out of 10, and it's here. He forgot just to take some sandpaper and round these squares off. It's not sharp, and you don't notice it unless you're in a pinch grip. But if you hold it in the handle, it's super. I'm just turning the oven off. The edges from Patrick is more than enough sharp. Just checking that's in view. As you see, no problem cutting. But as always, I like taking it further. So I'm gonna just blend the bevel. As you see, it's extremely thin. And I'm just gonna blend the bevel in. To the edge. Yeah, it won't focus, but same thing. I'm just gonna use my Nanoa 400. I'm just gonna make sure it's flat and then sharpen it and uh, going up from 400,000, 3,000, 5,000. Seeing how sharp I can get it. And I nearly forgot uh, the measurements. It's um, it's eighty five millimeters tall and one eighty five in cutting length. So it's a pretty substantial cleaver. Even if it's so thin, it has a nice weight to it. It feels solid. And this was already flat, so I'm just gonna start working. I'm just wiping so I got dry hands. And I'm sharpening this very low, maybe a 5 to 8 degree angle. And this feels incredible on the stone, so crisp, so nice. It tells me a lot of the heat treat, if it's hard enough, and I put it on the stone. So I'm rocking now to make it convex and blend the edge into the bevel. And as you see, oh, he's used a wheel, so it's hollow ground. Actually at the edge, I didn't notice that, but I see it now on the stone. I'm knocking both those shoulders off. You can see here. I'm sharpening down here, but also hitting here because there's a little shoulder here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it goes. I need to plane down the edge. It just needs to be thinner, so just gonna I forgot to remove the edge. Yeah, that's crisp. I'm gonna see what I haven't hit the edge 
bit by sharpening, so I'm gonna just see what this does to the edge. Three passes. Yeah, the edge is gone. What I'm doing is just to thin out the very edge. It's screaming thin, so I want to blend it more into the profile and adapt it more to my style. So Patrick, sorry for doing this, but you can polish them up later. He said before that I wasn't allowed to thin them because I'm scratching them, but yeah. These aren't test knives. I got two other test knives that I can thin and sharpen, but I'm doing this even. I'm just gonna check how quick this goes. Alright, I must move the quarter stone. This is gorgeous to thin and sharpen on the stones. You can feel that. Hearing a burr, but I'm just gonna switch up my stones. And I know the Shepton 220 is flat, so I'm not bother by um, flattening it. Yeah, I forgot. That's the only gripe I have with the sink bridge is the holder is so high so you need to do this but it's a quick fix. There, that was all the time it took. Thinning now to remove the shoulders and to blend the very edge. I'm not using much pressure. Taking off the shoulders where the hollow rounding begin and smoothing everything out. As if you wait a minute, you can see. You see, I'm starting, I'm hitting here and down here. I'm not hit a bird yet, so I'm just gonna continue. I'm not using a lot of force, I'm using 2-3 kilos, 4 to 6 pounds of force, just to match up all around with the edge, and then making it a bit more convex after it. And as I said, this feels incredible good on the stones. Just crisp and so nicely heat, treat, heat treated. I can already tell this steel, it feels on par with white steel. I tried some uh, white steel, single steel knives. I sharpened a couple of Matamoto KS. This feels similar on the stones. And that's, that's, yeah. You can't get any more, um, what do I say? better than that. That's saying a lot about the knife. You see I'm nearly taking the hollow grounding away. And 
that's a little of the idea. Making it more flat. I tried it and yeah, I want to sacrifice a little food fiction for the ultimate performance. It already performs extremely well, but I think this will make it even better. is probably gonna watch this and yeah. Sorry mate, you're gonna polish it up afterwards. I'm gonna try my best. I probably need not gonna give them back and uh, make a payment plan or something because these are great great knives. The quality here are way better than Arian Bloom. Way better than his customs. The balance, the feel, the grinds Everything is just spot on. The handle matched to the cleaver, everything. Okay. Just gonna take one more paper. Opening up. There. That's it. Just wiping. As you see, I'm starting to get it down here and up there. And the profile is a lovely, lovely smile. I love that profile. I thought I would like more flat cleavers, but Patrick has changed me. This profile is perfect. As I said, the knife is 9.9 .9 out of 10. Only, and I won't call it complaint, this, this needs to round this a little. Chamfer the edges. That's the only complaint I got about this knife. And that sells a lot. I'm picky, I want them thinner. I want them sharper, I want this, I want this, but... This is as near perfection you can get without making it yourself. So I can totally recommend Patrick Alvik as yeah, a maker of custom knives. I'm gonna link uh, his Facebook. I'm gonna ask him first but if it's okay. I'm gonna link it. Just it. I'm gonna link it down in the YouTube description. And if you want a totally awesome knives, he work with carbon steel, ATCRV. He does the best AVL I've ever found, and I've tested Devin Thomas and Patrick Alvik is better. He does good job with Nylox, which is a tool steel, very tough one. So yeah, I can totally recommend this maker, and it's gonna be fun watching him in grow and grow. Because this, yeah, this is good pottery. Very, very good. It's just me that's picky and wanting it my way. It's not a Frank Sinatra song. I want it my way. Is it? Sorry about for the bad singing. But yeah. Oh, I love this on the stones. So crisp. So damn nice. I'm nearing now. Nearing completion on this. Nice. It's 
taking my time. So it, it takes two hours. Yeah, it's gonna take two hours. Every knife is gonna be perfect when I'm done. We just got a patina of some kind on this because it isn't rusting while I'm sharpening. Let's see. This is already lightsaber sharp. I'm just taking it to the next level. This is also gonna make it easier to sharpen. I'm not at the edge yet because I'm slowly removing the steel layer. I would like a 120 stone, but this works too. We're in at 16 minutes. Yeah. So the thinning process is at least going to take half an hour, maybe, per side. If you don't want to watch, just forward the video. But I'm showing every step of the process. How long it takes. very even just seeing if I can Cotton to edge yet. So we're just gonna need to polish this down again because I'm moving too high up. But yeah, that's his problem. I'm just taking the worst shoulders of the knife off. Thinning practically a lightsaber. I'm testing and pushing the steel as far as I can. That's basically what I'm doing here. This is stupidly thin. I mean, it's paper thin. It's way thinner than my CCK now, and that's saying hell of a lot. It's a good bit. I would reckon 
30-40% thinner, nearly half as thin as my Shibata Kotetsu. It's ridiculous now. But I'm gonna see how the heat treat is. If it chips, I'm just gonna grind the chips away and build a stronger edge. This is about testing the heat treat and seeing how good it is. even possible. Always on hollow grounding, you've got tiny bit of shoulder. You imagine like a S grind ground. Right. You will always get some places on high ingredients like a um, Swede or something. A Swede for a Swedish man. There will be binding. That's just the uh, way of the beast. You won't get very good food release on a thin knife like this. But it's, it's 10 out of 10 in everything except food release. And that's a given. It's not a thick Takeda. I don't care about what people say about Takeda, they're not well done. Sorry, I've tried several and yeah. It's just a piece of steel with the grind like this down to the edge, that's all. Nearly. Some of the older Takedas were extremely good, but it seems now he let his apprentices do more of the work than he does himself. When Takeda self does it, they're incredible good because they're forged right. They're for forged, hammered into the shape they need. So if you got a Takeda made by Takeda, not his apprentices, it's good. But the ones made by his apprentices are often sick and they are not so good. The best knives I found from Japan is Shibata Kotetsu. And these are gonna outperform it. Turning again. I'm going to a knife meeting in Stockholm. 20th November, no, sorry, Bromma is the place. And we're gonna meet up. We have a group on Facebook, a Swedish group that I'm a member of, even though I'm not Swedish. It's a very good group. This is a very well made knife from a good maker. This is probably hurting the life maker Patrick because, yeah, as I said, we originally said I'm not gonna thin those and ruin the finish, but yeah, I need to test something thoroughly. I need to take it on the stones, seeing how the grind reacts. And 
looks less hollow ground on the back side. That's actually a good thing because sticking of no curve and you have a perfectly formed chisel ground so oh chisel we grind I mean if it's not anything that pushes the food away like a scratched up mess for it now but yeah, let's deal with the appeal it's a tool a blade is a tool it isn't to just have on the wall and look at as you see it's pretty scratched up here is probably a little lower high spot or something that happens to the best of them here I'm starting to there. So I'm gonna just flattening the 220 and then moving to the 400 to start the edge. And yeah, taking it from there. We're about soon half an hour in. So, here. And as I use the entire phone, it's now flat. That was all it took. flat now because yeah I flatten it before starting so I'm just wiping my hands wiping the handle a little and getting all the paper grit off the stone and getting to work I can feel this starting to bind now. These you know, professional stones are aimed for high hardness, so they work very good on harder steels like this. It's a 61 to 62. That's pretty hard. And if you want a knife from him, please send him a message. I'm gonna leave his link if I can and ask him first. Just seeing how that polishes up. Gonna have some work cut out for him, but yeah. all in the name of performance. I'm wrapping my finger against the handle just so I don't bump it into the stone. No, 
now I'm using my B3 4 kilos so 6 to 8 pounds so 4 Just gonna polish the sides a little more before moving to the edge. I'm using a full width or length of the stone. Side now. slightly that is why I'm creating those uneven scratches. Between 12 and 15 I'm gonna grate the edge. I can feel the edge, it's very crispy and nice on the stone. I'm using light pressure now, maybe a kilo, two pounds. Actually very narrow bird. Just flipping the stone. And this is a pretty easy to sharpen steel. It would be fun to see how the Nylox and ABL. The Nylox is at 61, the ABL is at incredible HRC 66. That's insane to be ABL. Just insane. The hardest I've ever found water doing it is around 63. 66 is a whole new ballpark. Just insane. There, 
I go from a burr. Looks good. And the same thing on the back side. And it feels so good on the stove. That's what I said. This is why I do burr based sharpening because I can tell exactly if the burr is even from here to the point there it is just gonna make some area where it swoops just to get rid of the burr and the right edge There. Just flattening before I put it away. It's ready for my next knife. It was solid in here, dead flat. Yeah, that was about it. Going to the Nano Professional 1000, which I already know is pretty dead flat. And just checking to make 100% sure. Creating a little slurry. Let's see. Striking my hands, my don't it's entire red by the handle. There, striking the handle a little. Starting by polishing it on the sides where I tinned it. And it feels so amazing. I love this steel on the stones. So good. And damn um, good. Just silky smooth. I'm just gonna wet the sponge a little again. Um, three four kilos. Doing the the, the, the places where I tin the first before moving to the very edge. Starting to help. Flipping the stone. Forty minutes. 
It's actually cool looking. It looks like it got a double like bastard Shinogi line meets a Kiriba or something weird one like that. You can see starting it's completely but yeah. Going through the backside. That's what she said. If anybody watches this, please subscribe, press like, leave a comment. As always. And this is an incredible piece of steel, an incredible, beautiful, very nicely done handle. Good level of craftsmanship here. Yeah takes pride in this work, you can see that in this blade. What I love about both the sto these stones, they do not clog, so you can just pour water on them keep sharpening. Great. And I love the feel of this blade on the stones. So damn good. Looks scratchy as hell, but yeah, sometimes you gotta accept that look, it's a tool. Well, moving to the edge, you see maybe five, three, four, five hundred grams, half a pound maybe. Just polishing it up. It feels so damn nice on the stone. I'm going lower and higher, lower and higher, lower and higher, just to make the edge a little stronger and more complex. Tiny burr, that's all I want. Doing the same here, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower. Just to blend in the edge. this good ring to it like a bell it sounds like a ring in the bell that's another song go Johnny go 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 checking all the burr sticks that's incredible clean it's also sets a good bit of the heat rate. I'm gonna test it just off a thousand. Yeah, that's sharp. It's not where I want it yet, but 
it's good enough. Yeah, sorry, I'm just flattening it again. It's good enough to move to 3000. these stones are to work with. Just splash a bit of water and you're off. I'm gonna just rip off some flurry hair and I got something to polish on. There. Just wiping again. Why prints and repeat? I've gotten some tomatoes, which I'm gonna test on afterwards, just to see. Now polishing, just the sides up a little, getting the worst of it. It's not gonna be very pretty when I'm done, but it's gonna be very, very sharp. And that's the most important thing. This 3000 also a good stone. It just cuts so damn good and thus it works good. As you see. A little just gonna spread it around there. Doing the back side before moving to the edge. And it feels so damn good. I can't believe how good this steel feels on. Um, the stones. Just seeing if for about 48 minutes still filming. Reckoning that Patrick can just throw this on a buffing wheel and polish it. And it's gonna look all nice and shiny again. Shiny and brand new, but I like the tool will look I like a knife that's scratchy. You can see that someone using it, it's not a wall hanger. Knife looks well used. Um, a mirror polish, yeah, it's gorgeous as hell, especially when it starts to patina. But it scratches so damn quick, and every time. You sharpen or tinning, it's a hell to restore. There, moving to the very edge.
It's incredibly long stones. I don't know how many times I've said this, said that in the video, but yeah. Sorry. I just, yeah. You can feel the knife. You can feel that it's well made. There. Just slipping it on my little, on my pants leg. Make sure it's a little right here. Stopping it a little. Checking with my nail. This is in view. Holy shit. That's. Oh my god. Mary Carter dressed. As you see how much more easy this goes now. It's starting to get a better and better edge. I'm just gonna take a little of the very corner here. Here at the point around the corner, can make it a little better. Here, it's about too little. Flattening again. And I'm moving to the 5000. That was about all it took. Pretty damn flat, so you can feel how the plate is if it sticks and yeah, reacts, it's pretty damn flat. Again, starting on the sides, just getting the worst away. more starting at the heel this time and then this is gonna be a sharp one and then it was already extremely sharp as I showed you but this is the next level Starting to get a nicer polish now, but it's far, far from a mirror, but I think it looks pretty good, like a bastard knife. I'm a bastard, so yeah. It suits me well. Backside now.
this guy got a lovely patina after some use which I think is incredible sexy on a knife shows you what you cut it's blue purplish if it's meat it's a little more yellow brown if it's acid like lemon and uh, onion so yeah tells you that the knife has been well used Nothing on the stone, a lot of tiny speck that can, can contaminate the edge. Feeling the edge, doing basically this, feeling how it progresses. It's, it's just, yeah, I'm so impressed. Woo! Turn a little higher. Just to get the very edge. Just barely the weight of the blade. Just creating a micro bevel. Like a speck of a hair. Maybe. Even though it's so incredible thin, it still feels solid. It's a good hunk of metal. I'm just gonna polish a little and around the corners behind the edge. That's a complete knife. You've got this beautiful ping when stropping the edge. That's just insanely gorgeous to listen to. Just stopping it a little on the pants leg, making sure it's dry because this is carbon steel. Got just a smidgen of chromium in it, I think it's 0 0.3, 0 0.4 or something. There, stopping the edge very lightly. You can hear the blade sing. One hour. And this is in view. That's... That's just insane. And this is the thicker, more plastic version. I'm doing this just to check there's any mistakes in there, just there weren't or aren't, weren't, aren't yeah, sorry my English is crappy my crap, crap this is flimsy the paper push cuts push cuts push cuts, damn that's sharp paper got wet, but yeah that's in view. I just slug. So Patrick, I hope the scratches are worth it because now this is a straight racer. I mean just this 
This tip is rounded. I don't know if. Yeah, that says a lot. It's pretty sharp. Thanks for watching. It's. I think it looks bloody awesome. I don't think to keeping this for myself, but yeah, Patrick, we're gonna make a payment plan. Sorry about this, but the knives are too good. I I can't separate with them. I'm sorry. But they are just yeah. I'm gonna do one last test. Fun. You see how that? Yeah. My God, this is one scary beast. I hope you can see how thin it is. It's like a razor blade. So thanks for watching. Please, please subscribe, leave a comment if you wonder about anything, please share the video, it helps me a lot, and yeah, thanks for watching, I know it's long my videos, but sharpening takes time, so thanks for watching, bye.